this video I want to talk about a combat loadout for something like an ambush patrol for, you know, you preppers, so you're not going to, you're most likely not going to have anything like grenades or claymores or something uh, like that, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, start with uh, the situation. Maybe you have some people that are in the neighborhood and you're part of the security uh, for the neighborhood and uh, you kind of got to counterattack or uh, do something to uh, take away that hostility that is potentially threatening your neighbors or your neighboring neighbors uh, neighborhoods and stuff like that and maybe you're able to get a group together because I wouldn't ex I wouldn't <clears throat> suggest that you try to Rambo uh, the situation uh, probably no less than uh, uh, four to six people uh, and these people probably should be pretty efficient and proficient uh, with uh, firearms and uh, tactics and that can take some time uh, so uh, anyways what you're gonna be looking at is probably gonna be out for you're gonna at least be out overnight uh, depending on the situation numbers and stuff like that you could be out for a while uh, so there's a few things that you can consider that are lessons from the military or uh, just using a little common sense for your environment so um, uh, basically what I have here is an LBV 88 loadout and I'm wearing BDUs and I'm gonna go ahead and explain pretty much everything that I am wearing uh, and <clears throat> and why I'm carrying certain things based on my experience in the kind of pockets or whatever. So first thing I want to talk about is your basic clothing here. So I have true spec uh, BDUs. It's in Tiger Stripe. Tiger Stripe worked a lot better uh, in you know the Pacific Northwest and the tree lines based on the ferns and stuff having a good amount of horizontal uh, vegetation and stuff like that so uh, it and being in a pretty shaded area uh, this pattern actually works pretty well in the Northwest uh, so here in Alaska not necessarily so uh, I'm still searching for other good patterns so anyways uh, depending on where you're at in Alaska of course but uh, anyways the uh, the BDU is not exactly the best thing uh, ever. I'm wearing 100% cotton, so it's good for uh, warmer climates, but there's a few things that BDUs are not going to give you. If you want to have elbow, elbow pads, you're going to have to do some modifications to that, and uh, I would recommend having something like a very thin Velcro on the inside, maybe, or some kind of elastic to keep, uh, keep the uh, padding in place, or maybe not take out all the stitching and then reinforce. You could do that yourself, of course, or you could send it off for alterations. Also, the bottom pockets here, basically useless, unless it's uh, basically like a neighborhood watch kind of situation, which, kind of getting into that, I wouldn't really be wearing a camouflage or whatever. Um, maybe if you're running an LBV, uh, a, a, an LBE setup like Alice gear, or maybe a chest rig, you would actually be able to utilize those pockets because chest rigs should typically be up high. Um, and uh, obviously it's going to droop down, so having a leg holster, yeah, you're probably, you may, if you're not running a pistol, then it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so, next thing is, you know, obviously knee pads. Uh, knee pads are pretty much a must, especially in this kind of situation. You're going to be in the kneeling a lot, you're going to be keep maintaining a low profile, crawling and stuff, smashing your knees on roots and stuff like that when you're trying to be fast or... Uh, whatever, um, not really that great. I prefer in inserts because I don't like how knee pads move around all the time uh, when you're actually using them. Uh, so I, I like to have inserts. Um, of course, you can do your own modifications and whatever, but anyways, as far as the BDUs are concerned, there's not a lot of redundancy to protect from tears and stuff like that. Uh, being 100% cotton, this stuff really sucks in, uh, as far as you know, color fading. Uh, and relative durability, ripstop doesn't exactly prevent rips, it's just supposed to resist it a little bit better than just having a twill, but a twill, a cotton twill will be lightweight, breathable, and it'll be uh, a little more resistant to fading uh, for the most part and even initiating that tear in some cases, depending on where the thread's going. So anyways, as far as like the, the loadout's concerned, I mean, you don't have any arm pockets, which I never really utilized when I was in the Marine Corps anyways. <clears throat> except for, uh, you know, like, pictures or letters or uh, stuff like that that I wanted to have on me for morale or whatever. Because um, having something on here can be kind of awkward when this is just shifting around. So, 
Um, what I have here with the LBV-88, no, I don't have any body armor, but if I was going to have it, it would probably just be soft body armor in this case because uh, you're mostly wanting to work on the element of surprise, not necessarily like a, like a raid, like if you're trying to rescue someone that got kidnapped or whatever. Um, where you're basically, yes, they're going to use surprise, but you're going to be in there and you're most likely going to take a hit. Um, this is going to be surprise and you're just uh, taking people out really quick or just disrupting them before they know you're there. So you're doing your work before they can even return fire for the most part. So uh, with that, I'm set up in that in that way. I don't have uh, body armor on, as I said, uh, but I would can have it underneath this vest and over a t-shirt. Uh, so... Uh, I would still be, have access to these pockets with the LBV-88. Uh, so, some body armor you can actually put, you know, some plates in there, uh, something for pistol rounds, maybe even you, you want rifle rounds, but that's going to be pretty heavy and bulky, uh, but it's up to you. <clears throat> so anyways, with this LBV-88, obviously I got my mags on my chest, they're really thin up here, down here, and then, you know, thicker up here for the prone when you're actually up in the prone this works out beautifully and that's why it was designed with angle pouches the first generation was vertical after testing they didn't really like that uh, this works out better if in prone and taking those magazines off the belt actually helps you with making more room for other stuff that you're gonna need as well um, but <clears throat> Uh, with this LBV-88 having the mags under here, you're going to be utilizing this, but you can still utilize the pockets right here. If you wanted to have this unclipped, what I do with my BDUs is I basically, let me go ahead and adjust the camera here just a bit. So basically what I have here is uh, I just have one of the buttons undone, and what I carry in here is actually a white light. So basically this is on the minimum lumen setting. This is a Phoenix, eh, let's see what this is. This is the Phoenix PD32. Uh, never done a review on this. I actually found this uh, quite recently, but um, I have it on the lowest lumen setting to prevent NDs and I actually face it into the LBV uh, so that if I do have an ND of the light, uh, then <clears throat> it'll go into the LBV and it'll remain hidden. Uh, one of the options is also when screwing it, but you don't necessarily want to uh, secure the buttons if you want to have ease of access, and it's not really a pain in the ass when you actually have to access it. The other side is m my administrative medical stuff and uh, convenience items. So what I have here, I'll just start pulling this stuff out. So I have a triangle bandage uh, for any boo-boos or you know any situations uh, where I would have time to use a triangle bandage, like breaks and stuff on the way or whatever. Um, I have sterile gloves, which if you're able to put on gloves, you're probably going to have time and be putting it down from your, uh, uh, putting down your rifle or whatever. I have hand sanitizer probably from eating or, you know, you, uh, you know, you haji poop where you end up wiping with your bare hands on accident. Um, I have FUBAR CLP. This stuff is good for everything. You can see the gun, the mosquito, the uh, sun, and the uh, medical stuff. This is good for, like, everything. It's a really good insect repellent. Uh, it's a really amazing CLP, actually, and it, it gives you a little bit of SPF, uh, a little bit of protection, but um, as far as, like, uh, medically, it's good for burns and uh, small scrapes it's almost like a little bit of a neosporin so it uses a lot of organic compounds and like essential oils and stuff like that um, so it can be used for pretty much anything uh, the next thing I have is chapstick and band-aid so this is a chapstick from uh, a military medical kit uh, you can get whatever chapstick you want it, who cares but uh, this is uh, this is just good to have around obviously chapstick is chapstick so you can decide to have it or not but like if you're in the uh, uh, wet season or not the wet season but the colder season you're gonna want this this can be a real pain in the ass if you uh, start getting chapped lips band-aids I don't really use band-aids but if you want to carry them that's up to you and um, it's more for it, it's in, not as much of a convenience if other people want to have band-aids for little cuts and scrapes from the brush or whatever might be the case so um, with all that said, uh, that's that's what I carry in my uh, left breast pocket. You can carry it, you know, whichever pocket you want. But that's one of the things I like about the BDUs is they have pretty generous pockets, and it's not Velcro, it's button, and I can leave this open for whenever I need to get to the uh, Fubar CLP for the uh, bug dope application or sunscreen or 
uh, whatever I need it for. So the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the leg area and give you guys an idea of what I do here. So, uh, basically on this side, uh, in this pocket, I have nothing. All right, there's nothing really that I can think of that I need here, and plus stuff can end up falling out here. So in this cargo pocket right here, what I keep is my immediate, immediate trauma uh, item. So uh, you could have the middle pocket open here on the BDU, but uh, this is what I have here. I have a rat, uh, a rat tea tourniquet, so uh, a rat's tourniquet, so, um, and I also have an Israeli bandage. So uh, basically... This is all I would use for initial trauma. Now, uh, for something like a TRU uh, set or other modern, more modern, uh, you know, clothing, you can carry more. And I know I'm going to get some crap about the rat tourniquet um, because it's only really good for arms and not necessarily for legs and big extremities. Uh, so, yeah, I do intend to upgrade that. But, anyways, that's what I carry there. It's just the immediate trauma set, and I prefer these uh, pockets go up higher, and I think I'm actually going to end up uh, doing that modification where the pocket actually comes up to here. Uh, and because this is so big, if you have anything in here, it's going to clack against the knees, uh, and it's not going to be very comfortable. So, here, obviously, I have my pistol, and I only have one mag pouch on me because here's the thing if you're going to be ambushing and being having the element of surprise, if you end up running out of ammo, uh, during an ambush, and most likely he uh, be in counterattacked. Uh, so uh, uh, if you're down to your pistol doing that, then you're in a you're having a pretty bad day. Uh, so, uh, anyways, that's the reason why I only carry one mag. I'm not going to load myself down like Rambo. It's up to you. But anyways, uh, so uh, in here, all I have is note gear, and this is for me to obviously take down notes. And I think everybody should have no gear and have at least one button undone for this no gear and the good thing about this is if you have time to take notes you can just open this up on your leg and just uh, there you go so obviously I have my no gear here you know nothing really too special or right in the rain and I have basic pins I need to get right in the rain uh, pins but you know it's kind of an ass pain uh, with the price of them but apparently they're uh, pretty good and they last a while and you can just refill them so that's kind of convenient and I like that feature but I mean you can keep this pocket open as I said and you know not much is gonna end up um, you know getting getting in there or getting out uh, if you're carrying something big like this in this cargo pocket but I have in an area that's it's not immediately you know get it's not getting in the way really and it's not hurting anything. It's not going to clack against my knees uh, too much. Uh, so I'm able to keep it out of the way in an area where it's not like right on my chest or anything. Uh, where it's going to be basically uh, just taking up unnecessary space. So when I could have it for immediate access. Uh, I have other things that need more immediate access and more common usage. So anyways, uh, let me go back up to the... Uh, uh, let's go up to the waste region. So... Um, here, obviously, I have two canteens. A lot of people would pr um, probably prefer to have a hydration bladder or something like that. If you're going to be on an ambush patrol, if you're out for more than two days, you're probably going to be carrying something like an Alice pack or something like that. That's what I would carry the hydration bladder in because you're going to be on the move a lot. And uh, uh, that's when you'd want to hydrate. I wouldn't want, this loose, uh, want it loosely on. I mean, you can do that, uh, but... Uh, for the most part, I would be separated from my gear uh, so that uh, I could actually be uh, moving fast instead of having to pick up my gear during an ambush when it, everything goes wrong. Um, but basically, my backpack would be the uh, butt pack. And so if you wanted to have your hydration bladder in there, that would probably be fine. I have an extra chow in there. I have a rain jacket. And I also have uh, like a couple of Kim lights and... Uh, that's where the extra stuff is, like electrical tape and uh, crap like that. And I have two canteens, so one on each side. This area is pretty much open here. And in this grenade pouch isn't a grenade. What it is, is my compass. And this compass is dummy corded. Here's the thing. You can dummy cord it on the inside of the pouch because the inside of the pouches have this little area right here where you can dummy cord things. Uh, so, you know, it could... <clears throat> It could end up uh, paying off over time, but I have it dummy corded down to the belt, as you can see here. So the pocket works out perfectly for this. So the next one that I have, 
is I have a monocular in here. I don't use binos. I don't need two eyes observing. I just need one. I just need uh, my one good eye uh, looking through, and I can take notes from there. And this is dummy corded as well. You're probably going to spend a lot of time observing. So having it in an immediate area and having dummy corded, since it has the ability to be dummy corded, if uh, your pocket goes out or it just snaps when you're uh, running, um, probably good to keep that thing around because uh, you'll probably need it even if you're uh, falling back or whatever. If you uh, get fortunate enough to where you actually get a breather from the enemy, uh, you're probably going to have to be observing again. So, uh, making sure that you're in the clear. So anyways, that's why I have that there and I have a dummy corded to the belt also. Now here I have a mag pouch and obviously there's a dump pouch and that would be empty and rolled up but right now I have bandana and gloves. I'll get to that in a bit. But anyways, right here, this is my, you know, Basically, I have time to use it, uh, med kit. So in here, I have a compression gauze, an extra one, uh, and then I have another triangle bandage, and I have an eye, an eye pad, a sterile eye pad for treating eye wounds. I have quick clot, um, and then, then I have some rolled up gauze. And then I have a bag of stuff that needs to stay waterproof because, like this pill bottle, this isn't waterproof. It needs to stay in a waterproof container. Ziploc bags can be very good. Double Ziploc them or whatever. It doesn't take up much room. And it's very lightweight. Then I have some duct tape. This can be invaluable for uh, keeping things cinched down or applying pressure or keeping uh, just keeping things uh, good to go. And then I also have, um, you know, medical wrap. Now, this would be good for marking or um, basically pretty much anything. I, I mean, it would be good for taping up stuff and uh, keeping things in place, but it doesn't need to be as hardcore as duct tape. So I have that at the bottom. And then beneath that, <coughs> razor blade in the package. This is typically in the SOL uh, survival kits, but I have that here. It's still in the sterile packaging, so it's good to go. Uh, you can keep this wherever you want, maybe in your butt, maybe in, in your butt pocket or whatever. But that's what I have. So, anyways, uh, let's see here. Then I put all the uh, non-essential stuff on, at the bottom, like pills or whatever. And then, you know, the eye patch or whatever. Uh, the extra gauze. And then, obviously, the triangle bandage. You're going to have time to put the triangle bandage on, obviously. And then, of course, the... This would be the more immediate thing because it's a compression gauze or a compression bandage, so that might be more immediately needed, but you have an extra one if you need it. So, anyways, it's all about having the time to use that. So, when we go to the dump pouch, I was talking about gloves. I would typically prefer Nomex flight gloves, but these are more my training gloves. These are first tactical gloves. These are good gloves, but uh, um, <clears throat> I like flight gloves a little bit more. Um, they... I have the perfect size. It has like a huge variety of sizes, so you can't really go wrong with that. It has a little bit of flex and it cinches down pretty good. Now, this is a an, obviously an Asian tiger stripe bandana, not necessarily um, matching the pattern of uh, this tiger stripe, but however, bandanas in general are a very good item to have. And it's the last item I'm going to talk about wrap it up and use it as a bandana. I would recommend uh, using a bandana and then a boonie. This will keep the sweat out of your eyes. <clears throat> It'll uh, take up sweat. Um, less annoying to have. You won't really have mosquitoes able to bite through this as much. Uh, so it's a very good piece of gear to have. And uh, yeah, it, it just keeps your head uh, cool and uh, when it gets wet, uh, you get a little bit of a breeze, keeps your head cool and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's really good, really good stuff to have. And I I like these a lot. So, good for wiping sweat off your face and then putting back on your head. I wore these a lot on deployment, and I fell in love with the concept of a bandana being turned into a do-rag, being put on the head. So, anyways, go ahead and uh, close out of this monkey. And... So that's pretty much it for the combat loadout for the ambush patrol. Now, of course, this is kind of a, a wet dream for a lot of people, but it's really not exactly the cutest thing because you don't have medevac, you don't have resupply, you're basically on your own. And 
uh, things like ha having this stuff, uh, this is very basic stuff, uh, stuff that you're most likely going to use, you're going to spend more time observing, if you're smart you're going to spend more time observing than clackety clacking uh, on using your trigger finger, uh, so <clears throat> uh, basically this is my loadout, I want stuff to be very efficient in, in areas where I can go prone a lot and it's not necessarily, you're going to be spending time on the move but you're going to spend a lot of time observing and stuff like that, pre-planning uh, and just waiting in position and that's going to suck. Of course you can stage magazines or whatever but anyways, uh, other than that, I don't really have uh, too much just uh, based on my experience I would say that uh, this is a pretty good setup. Uh, but of course you could change the clothing and how you do things, how you carry stuff, but I'd, I'd recommend keeping stuff off your gear and keeping them in your pockets uh, because even if you have your gear off you can take care of yourself, like having your uh, gun not on a battle belt but on your actual belt, that, that's what I would recommend is actually attaching it there so if you take this crap off because you're resting or whatever you still have your pistol on you. Just, that's just me and of course I have a K bar here right where my pistol is so you know it's in my fighting hand so it's still good for usage so yeah uh, I mean however you want to set your gear up that's up to you but for me that's how I would set it up so anyways uh, with all that said uh, go ahead and leave your comments below and uh, look forward to hearing from you know the different opinions out there but um, other than that you guys uh, have a good one